So we're still not back to normal, right? Nope. Definitely not. Um, so there's so many recovering mentally, the emotionally, financially burdened, right? I, I can't. <sighs> Uncertain about their lives. From what I understand, 40% of our 40% of our homes have been damaged. That's what, uh, what that's what I've heard. That that's overwhelming. And it, it, it's hard because, and I was speaking with Megan about it. I'm sure you've had these conversations with your families. We're experiencing this here, but you know, my, my sister's in Greece right now, so she has no idea. I mean, she's praying for me, of course. She kind of understands from the pictures, but you don't know until you know, until you're in it. So no one can care for us better than the community here, the church body, the people around us that we love, because we're going through it together. Whether your house was damaged or not, it still hits you unless you're, you've just literally been isolated at home and not going out and seeing anything or turning on the, the screens. So we have to care for each other. It's actually a mandate. We have to care for ourselves uh, physically, mentally, uh, spiritually. And the, the spiritual, mainly the spiritual is why we're here this morning. This, this, is, you, this is spiritual care. Whether you think you need it or not, right? Um, I spoke a little on compassion last week and, and how this trauma that we've all experienced on, on one level or another, it, it's brought many together. And in many ways, I'm not grateful for what has happened, the, the, the tragedy of it, of, of loss, especially when you're talking about your whole life is changing because your foundation and your job is gone and all those kinds of things. I'm grateful for what God is doing through it. There's so many testimonies being built out of this. I look around here at story, 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 story. I've seen people change. Like, to be the people God designed them to be because of a tragedy and, and destruction. So I've been wondering, how, well, how lo- is this going to last? The positive effects, will this continue into the future? Because there's, there's a taper down, right? There's recovery. And uh, even here at this distribution center, um, the needs are gone down, and we're, we're going to transition. This is not, you know, our church is not going to be permanently like this, but neighborhoods and businesses, from what I understand, are going to be changed forever. Actually, there's going to be somewhat of a new version of a Spencer, Right? one that never existed before. And that, to me, sounds like new creation. That sounds like restoration from destruction. And now there's something we can understand about the kingdom from all of this. And we're in it right now. And that's because destruction and devastation brings the opportunity for restoration, brings the opportunity for creation or new creation or recreation. And what is incredible is that it, it brings the opportunity for us very quick, quickly as it happens to our, our, our perspective changes as a group, as a people. And we find ourselves not doing the things that we were doing before that we thought were so important. The things that our, our busyness maybe was defined as a few weeks ago, now they've changed. And this is what we've seen here with about, I don't know, 75 volunteers a day the first week. 
people's busyness and all the time we spend and all the things that we do have been replaced for uh, with drawing, drawing closer to one another, encouraging one another, serving one another, using our time and talent for each other's benefit. People literally, their, their whole day, and, and this is out there too, out working and no thought to it, maybe not eating and just giving 12 hours to helping somebody who is in need without, uh, without a thought. So what happened to all the things that were so important before? The perspective has changed because of crisis, because of destruction. People giving generously. People encouraging one another. People from all, di all different backgrounds. I've seen people who, who would never talk to each other embracing one another. Building one another up. Building e each other up. So, so what this all sounds like to me, it kind of sounds like the early church. Kind of sounds like what God wanted the early community of followers of Christ to be, and ultimately us, actually ultimately as, as a people. And we see that in Acts 2.44. All the believers were together, and they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Imagine if that's how God intended us to live. We're, we're not just in a, in a tragedy, but every day, where can I help someone? How can I help someone? How can I give to someone? How can I encourage someone else? Rather than the opposite, how can I tear down? What can I find wrong? Imagine if that's how God created us to live. <laughs> Caring for one another. Displaying his love for us through our love for one another, that actually sounds about right. I think that's what he did plan. And disaster, local disaster has brought that out in this town or city. And it's what, what is already instilled within us as men and women made in the image of God. So I really pray this does not end like Christmas season, when it's, it's like a month and maybe a little trail afterwards of giving generously, and then it fizzles and fades away. I think this is different. There should be lasting change, but our human tendency is to do what? It's to, all right, things are okay now. I'm going to back down and take it easy and, and return back. Some things you return to doing will never be the same after disaster or trauma or anything else you go through. You can try, and it's just not. Don't, and don't force it. Just, you know what, go in the, the direction that God wants you to go. And he's written that direction in his word. So how we continue out of this is determined by how we choose to live and who we choose to serve. And by that, I mean our allegiance who our Lord is, who our Savior is. Because for many of us, we're going to look back in, I don't know, 10 years in, in, in the future, we're going to say, we're going to realize that God used a great local flood to make us, draw us into the people that we were created to be and to show us what our purpose is. Well, thankfully, that's written in Scripture also. And it starts in Genesis. Genesis 1.27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. That's called the first commission. A commission is just an instruction, 
And in this case, when God is giving this com commission, the, the command, the instructions, he's also going to equip the ability to carry out the command that he's given. And that's what God blessed them means. We're created in his image, and then God blessed them. He instilled them with abilities from him, divine abilities. In other words, he shared his power with us, created beings. And he did that so we could be part of this creative process. And it's powerful. It's, it, it's not just the physical in, in the, the reproduction. Animals and plants can reproduce too. We are a spiritual species endowed with the breath of God. And that's what makes humanity different. We can ponder and wonder. We can imagine and dream we can invent and explain things. We can write, we can paint, design and engineer. We can love and care for one another on a level that is far superior and beyond uh, an animal caring for their young. And all of us were created to be fruitful and multiply. To bear the fruit, meaning to bear the results, the, the production evidence of a God-breathed ability that's in us. So that it's displayed to people around us. So that in our lives, people can clearly see, well, that is, a, that is attributed to God. And, of course, that's going to give him the credit, right? And to multiply it, to multiply, increase that reality over the entire earth. Not, we're not talking about we're going to have just lots of babies and lots of families and fill the whole earth until not one square inch is not full with a human being. That would be really weird. And that's not literal in what we're talking about. But it's really talking about to, to fill the earth with, with the glory of God. To fill the earth with the glory of God. That's what we're created for. God always desired what Isaiah the prophet saw at his commission. He saw this vision of angels saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The earth being full of those made in his image sounds exactly what God's glory is. A great theologian once said, the glory of God is the living man. And the life of man is the vision of God. In other words, the glory of God is a humanity fully alive. If our lives are that special to God that he would see us a part of his own glory, just think about it. He, he crowned us with his glory. Hebrews 2, 6. But there is a place where someone has testified, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. So if our lives are, that's, I mean, I don't know. Do I feel crowned with glory all the time? I don't feel, I don't feel crowned with glory right now. I'll just be honest. I feel, I feel crowned with curls. Um. If God made us that special, if he considers us that reflection of his image and he gives us these creative abilities and shares his creative power with us, I think that he would go through great lengths to command us and give us instructions 
and equip us to be the people that he created us to be. And we stray from that because of our our free will that we have. That's another blessing. We stray from that because of temptations to just do things that aren't according to his divine nature. And, And disasters and circumstances test those things. Just financial burdens alone test those things. It's a test. Absolutely. But God will take devastation, tragedy, and even our sinful mistakes, and he'll transform them into an opportunity for us to become the humanity he designed us to be originally. It was his plan all along. Crowning us with glory in order to fill the whole earth. And I I believe that the glory of God is already being manifested right here in Spencer. Right now, through a disaster and devastation. And I, I, I know it doesn't, it may not feel like it. But, but look what he did after the fall. Look what he did after we opened the door to so much pain and heartache and shame. Things we had no knowledge of before. He never gave up on who he made us to be. Sin devastated mankind. Trying to distort really that that image, that likeness, that masterpiece that you are, that God created you to be. When, When someone else paints a picture or does a great work, we give credit to that person, right? a famous artist or whatever. Somebody designs something. The artist or the creator is praised, but the work of art is wondered at. We are the things wondered at to the praise of God, the master painter. So he's getting the glory. The Bible tells us that we are his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That we should walk in them. Everything, every time we try to align our lives to be the workmanship he created us to be, there is an enemy of our soul who is out to destroy that image always out to destroy the works of God. And yes, God allowed Satan to do this, just like Job. And many faithful people before us, like Joseph, but just like he said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. That's what God can do out of our hopeless circumstances. That's what real hope is. And even after the greatest flood in all of history, 120 years Noah preached, and they would not listen. <laughs> they, 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 they refused to turn from the evil ways. We see this commission, this this design, this plan continue, and it goes on throughout the Bible. Genesis 9-1, then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, here it is, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Now, now to say that God is simply saying, well, yeah, I just want you guys to reproduce. That's it. Just do that. Or be fruitful as in what? As in what? Healthy kids? Good jobs? No, there, there's more. There's more. There's a a, a greater vision that God has for us. In this case, he promised in a rainbow that he would never do that destruction again. To remind us after our storms, God, only God, can bring 
hope and restoration that's lasting. And you may not see it, but there is, there's, there's a rainbow over Spencer right now. And God's using our lives to paint it. But we have a cooperation and a participation in that every single day. From Noah's family came nations, and God chose one nation through Abraham to continue to re- reveal his glory and plan for humanity. And he, he blessed Abraham, and he told him, you're going to fill the earth too. Same, same deal, uh, as many as the stars. This, this image of multiplic- multiplication and, 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 and humanity. Then came David, and through a royal line prophesied in history, eventually a king would be born, not by man, but by the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary. And Jesus was born. This is is God, in all his glory, made flesh, showing us the reality of being fruitful and multiplying, and he displayed the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Multiplying his heart, and his nature into what we call discipleship, into followers. There was no, it it wasn't about a a, a physical reproduction, obviously. Uh, Saying Jesus wasn't married. I don't care what the Da Vinci Code says, you know. So we're talking about spiritual reproduction. And what does he do? He He shows his heart. He comes to people who are lost and hopeless, in and out of disaster and crisis every day. Similar feelings to how we feel now, except I, well, we can't even compare because we don't know. You only know what it's like to be in a war when you're in war. You can read about it, but you're not going to know. But there were people going through crisis and devastation. And he came and and all that and in one location, in one nation at one time, and he began to make disciples. The multiplication started. And he loved them like his own family. He he was doing what we're doing now. I, I think we're doing it. Right? Are we still are you still hugging more? I am. I wanna I wanna hug a lot more. So you're gonna think it's weird, but Just treat you like family. Aren't we family? And then he humbly served the creatures that he created. We don't know what that's like. So much so that he he died for them and he, he died for us all to show the length and the depth of his love for us and his desire to see us fulfill what he created us to be. He rose from the grave, ascended to heaven, and before he did, he gave another commission that's similar to all the way back in Genesis. Here's what he said. Matthew 28, 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven on on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Go and be fruitful. Go and multiply. Go and make disciples. Bear the fruit of my spirit is what Jesus was saying. And we know what the fruit of the spirit is, Love, joy, peace, uh, forbearance, patience, right? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Multiplying, bearing that kind of fruit, and then multiplying is making disciples, not bringing people into a cult or getting people to sign a membership card. It's, it's, multiplying the image of God in other people, people who are followers, imitators, uh, likeness bearers of the one who created them, crowned with the glory of an invisible God. Wow, that's powerful. And we have a part in that process? Yeah, we do. The fruit that we bear and who we follow and credit that fruit to brings hope 
to the hopeless. And when they turn to Christ, the glory of God spreads. And his plan is coming to pass. When, when they say, oh, wow, you are just so loving and how you're, I can't believe, they, say, they said it a lot to us this week, and we have to every time, and it's not false humility. You're, what your church is doing is so good, and we're, I mean, it's so awesome what you're doing. And you're so uh, loving and caring, and, and just, put, you know, point that right to God. Because the only way that's happening is from the image of God. It, it, the only way that's going to happen is, is if all of this is true, and it has to be. Because people by nature are selfish. We just are in some way or another. We didn't invent love and, and compassion and, 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 and forbearance and goodness and faithfulness, all these things. These, these are characteristics from God. And he's giving, the, giving them to us to distribute them, to reflect his will, his love, his purposes on people who don't understand that he's real. It's the evidence of God built in man. And it's coming out of disaster. It's a prime time for it. We're part of the creative process in other people. I find this amazing. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I was in a discipleship program. They drilled this verse into us. I think I'm just now beginning to fully understand. Someone, a human being, has a part in the, the, the new creation process in your life because you saw the evidence of God in someone else. And what better time than crisis and tragedy to bring that out? It'd be a lot harder if everything was just perfect all the time, right? For us to change and grow and all that. Because the new comes out of times of despair, out of chaos, out of great loss, well, how can that be? How can that be? My friend Ryan Yates, he's just lost his baby in our, in, in our ministry network. I, I, how? You know, I, I don't, I don't, I, well, God, that's the only way. Something good will come out of it. And I know that family knows because they already understand the image they were created in. God always continues his plan. That's, that's how, really, that's why. From murders, plagues, floods, slavery, persecutions, even death. Out of our devastation, he brings hope in who we become out of it. So if you become a new creation out of this, or like more in tune with who you are, who you're created to be, then you are participating in the plans of God. Because he created you to be his glory, a reflection of him, his glory spreading to others as you bear fruit from the spirit he poured out on the earth. Because after he ascended, he poured out his Holy Spirit on the whole earth, available to you even this morning. You can't see it. You can't necessarily feel it. And that's the mission of the church, ladies and gentlemen but it's always been the design of humanity to carry his image, his likeness, his fruit, a loving God who loves people, loves the people he created and longs for restoration with them. He longs for restoration with you today. And he's calling you by his spirit through other people who are around you right now in this building, in this town, in this community, Wherever you're at, he's put those people in your lives to bear his image to you, to show you that a God who you can't see or hear or touch right now is fully alive and fully real. 
And he chose us, his creation, to bear that reality. That sounds like a big mission that I can't handle on my own. I don't know about you. Even out of your circumstances today, even through the loss and the changes that this, this town may see, we'll probably see, right? Buildings being changed. Um, some people this morning, your lives are falling apart. That's what it feels like. But let me tell you, God's plan for human beings hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. He, he's not changing his plan. He, he knows what he wants. And he loves what he wants. And what he wants is you to be a part of his family and his kingdom. If we follow his commission, his instructions to be fruitful out of this devastation and multiply this message of hope in Christ, the purposes of God in humanity to turn our devastation into glory and, and bring us from death to eternal life. So do you understand that hope today? Do you really know your creator today? Do you really know him? You, do you, do you know who he is? Do you know that there's only one God? There is only one who would do what needed to be done. And that's to literally come down and show you, show us humanity, this is what the mission is. This is how much I love you. This is what I want to do for you. I want to, I want to help you. I want to serve you. I'm going to, I'm going to show you that I'm not this God just out to get you all the time, just out to punish you and, and pick out all the things in your life and, you know, your, the movies you're watching and the way you're dressing and this and that and all these things that we get from churchiosity. He'd be right here. If, if Jesus was here in the, in the physical, he would be working alongside us, helping rebuild this town, and at the same time rebuilding lives. Because they would be like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is what God is about. This is how much he cares for us. That same feeling that I was talking about earlier where I just, I want to help everybody. I can't, I don't even want to, I don't want to look at everyone because it's, people that I want to help, where did that even come from? It's being poured out in this whole area right now. And be aware of it. It's not just contagious compassion that comes from a cool logo at Walgreens when you donate. Or a, a motto or a slogan or an ad. It's the spirit of God being poured out in, in a town coming out of devastation and severe loss to shift their perspective from the material to the spiritual. And we're ripe for revival. And revival does not always mean a big tent outside with an awesome guest speaker. Revival is men and women realizing their destiny and who they were created to be, and they, they dedicate their entire being to that hope and that destiny. And that's the image of God, and that's Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me this morning? Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There's some here today who your whole life you've been 
waiting and longing and something's been driving you for uh, what the church calls mission. But it's the great commission of God. And it is to see lives transformed into where they were created to be, who they were created to be, in the image of a loving God and manifesting his glory all across this earth. That's what drives you to do the things that you're doing. And right now it's, it's driving you into a relationship with a living Savior. His name is Jesus. You have to, you have to acknowledge him as as, as Lord and Savior and, and, and commit to that and understand that he is real and he, he died for you. And this, this is something that happened in history. It's, it's actually real. I'm speaking to the, the old skeptic that I was. Once your life, once, once your life aligns with this mission, this commission, there's, there's no turning back because it is the most fulfilling and rewarding thing you could ever do with your life. And it's ironic because it's anti what culture tells us, and that's to get for ourselves and make a name for ourselves and, and build our things and, and et cetera, et cetera. It's giving and it's sacrifice and it, it's, there's no greater joy. So if that's you this morning, just, just, there's, there's, there's no formula. So I don't have one for you. There's some of you in devastation this morning. You say, yeah, I, I, I believe in all that. And, um, what if, what if, what if this, what, what if God already foresaw and knew this event that would happen in your life that's affecting you right now and he already knew that it was going to be an opportunity for your good because you're going to come out of this so in love with Jesus and so loving towards his people lives are going to be transformed because of your testimony out of this so that's there's your why if you wanted a why that's why because of the good that's coming out of it Just close your eyes this morning. We're going to close, and I need like um, three prayer people up here on both sides. So if, if you've never been in a, a service where people pray for you, uh, just don't get freaked out. There's power in prayer. The same way God chose us to bear his image to the world, he uses us as touch points. That's why for most of us, hugs are okay, I guess, from people that we like. But um, prayer is a, a weapon. It is communication with God. It is just something he designed. And the Bible says the church is here as part of that prayer process. And this morning, some of you need prayer for things that I can't express from up here on a microphone. So we want to give you that time after I pray and close this morning to come up and just be prayed over. Any need you can imagine, these prayer people will pray for you, whether it's your, your financial situation or a struggle that you're going with and, and you, you really, you, can only, you don't want to tell anybody else, right? That kind of thing. Or maybe you just, you need help understanding who Jesus is. We just want to be available. One of the, the best ministries that you can have today is being prayed over in your life. So I'm going to pray right now over you and then just you can, you can dismiss and then those of you who need prayer, you just come right up. We're not going anywhere up here anyway. Father, I thank you for your glory that is being manifested in Spencer, Iowa right now, Lord, from under that pavilion outside with the kids, Lord, to in our uh, neighborhoods, Lord, to the other churches preaching your word. God, I, I thank you that out of disaster, you bring creation, Lord. Out of devastation, you bring your glory, Lord. And I pray that we would be your glory to not just Spencer, but the entire planet, Lord. That we would spread your message, be fruitful, and multiply your great commission in discipleship. 
as we learn exactly who we're made to be, a people loved by our maker and a people who love one another. God, bless your people. Bless these who are getting prayer as we leave here in Jesus' name. Amen.